it so how was the internship experience in general because now it was a more uh, longer duration internship and uh, you're working at a very different company so how was that experience looking like? uh, yeah actually that experience was actually good because i worked on things that i have never worked upon because i worked on the front end uh, visual regression testing part so i had to implement the whole pipeline and i had to write various test uh, around that so that was my first project that i worked upon and then second project that i worked upon was uh, like implementing two or three features in the jira model that we have and that was a backend project but yeah so that was the things that i worked upon in my sixth month internship uh, actually my college is also going on and i had exams as well and uh, the research project is also going on because in our college we have like the last year is full research oriented based and we have have to write a research paper to get published so everything was going on at the same time so it was a quite a hectic time for me but i did enjoy my uh, internship there because i could feel that we have a good chill amount of work life uh, work life balance at atlassian so it was not that overwhelming for me and uh, like i did manage it but now as i started as a full time employee then it's a really great learning experience for me yeah. yeah i think again as you mentioned uh, as you grow into the role you as you uh, go to a longer duration internship then there are more things to manage right now as you mentioned research paper was there college exam was there and then you have to also work on improving your skills also work on understanding what is required to solve that project or you whatever you are working on maybe grab a skill or two um, uh, it's a totally different experience altogether and i think as you mentioned you really enjoyed it uh, for the audience listening in it's a very a uh, wholesome experience in general because you get to interact with a lot of people because 6 months is a very diff, uh, good timeline you get to do yes. a lot of things uh, generally mujhe to aisa lagta hai ki whenever i get to a new job a new place starting a month even at my 2 uh, months just ramp up process mein nikal jate hai to interact with people to understand how the processes work over there so 6 months should be a definite like should be a good time for internship because starting ke 2 months to is only ramp up and understanding the things and concepts yeah, yeah definitely it's only the onboarding stuff and you get to learn the skills and for what you need to do you just take time to understand that but yeah 6 months is a quite a good amount of time you to understand a company this culture to understand like what the things you have to work upon so yeah it was a whole some experience for me and i did get to learn about the company culture and i made my decision that i want to stay here so, yeah yeah um and i think uh, before moving on to the next question uh, is the information for the audience listening in a few really move into wanted to move into the tech world uh, and you want to work on some awesome projects newton school has recently launched their full stack development course and you can check that out it's a very amazing course because you get to learn full stack development from scratch uh, all the skills and all the things that are required to learn and then the best part is that you get to build on real life projects some awesome projects that you get to build and also one of the best thing is that it's a zero fee upfront course so don't, you don't have to pay anything for starting the course for joining in the course and also newton school will help you get placed at startups and mncs so you get the right job from the course so link is in the description box uh, below you can check that out you can learn more about the course and uh, move into the tech space and moving on to the next part of the things uh, so hansika you decided to join and stay back at lagen Uh, based on your experiences but how was that experience looked like for you uh, how were things when changed from working as an intern to working as a full time uh, employee so how was that experience for you okay so like uh, there wasn't a change i would say because uh, when you are six month intern then you are at par as the company's employee mm-hmm. so like they don't change like i was working on the real life projects in the six month internship as well and same i'm working on now Mm-hmm. so i won't say there's a much change a uh, drastic change that i would say but yeah my team changed uh, like i was working on a different in a different team in my internship now i'm working on a different team when i'm starting my work mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so i'm just working on this same set of things that i was working so i won't say that was, there was a much change and like what, what i would say that uh, because i think atlas is a very good company to start your career with because people here are so nice that they'll make uh, they'll teach you things that you don't know and it's a very comfortable place to be in <laughs> so that's why i really enjoy being here yeah i think uh, it makes sense because uh, as you mentioned i have heard very good things about atlas and how it could turn out to be a good starting point for anyone who is moving to the tech space 
इफ यू आर एट द नॉट नॉट एट द बिगनिंग यू एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ योर करियर इफ यू जॉइन कंपनीज लाइक एट लॉशन यू विल गेट टू एक्सपीरियंस हाउ यू वर्क ऑन स्केलेबल प्रोजेक्ट्स हाउ यू वर्क ऑन थिंग्स दैट आर दैट रिक्वायर सम ऑफ ब्रेन स्ट्रॉमिंग हाउ यू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स बट ऑन द सेम टाइम इट्स नॉट वेरी हैक्टिक इट्स नॉट लाइक यू आर वर्किंग ओ डे इन डे आउट एंड विदाउट लाइक गेटिंग टू स्ट्रेस्ड और गेटिंग बर्न आउट सो अगेन अ वेरी गुड एक्सपीरियंस ऑल टूगेदर एंड uh i hope that what the decision uh, that was in favor for you that worked out like i want to yes definitely yeah right yeah so for me work life with uh, balance is really important like i want because i don't want to make work as the only thing that i have so i have other things to in my life and i want to focus on that as well like i like singing and i like music and so i want to focus on that them as well so i don't make want to make my work as priority that's why i feel like at lasim is a really good company to be in like i log in at 9 am and i just log out at 5 or 6 whenever my work is completed and if my work is done then nobody pings me after 5 or 6 like i don't have any disturbances from anyone and even if uh, people are on on call they are paid for that if they are working for extra hours so yeah that's a great way to be in you have a state of you know peace you don't have to worry about things that might happen behind your back so yeah that's a really plus point of being here yeah i think and it's a very significant plus point and that what you told is that is so good that people really value work life balance over there and with this pandemic and with the things that have changed uh, in recent past it has made more sense to understand the priority of work life balance or health in uh, in, in the recent times and as you mentioned that people don't generally don't ping you or don't disturb you after your office hours and if you are working late if you are working outside your office hours you are getting uh, paid and compensated well for that so yeah definitely a plus one for that and how it translates well because uh, as you see in this podcast ansika is being a promoter for the company in that way because if you promote good work life balance if you promote good things in the company people tend to promote it people tend to make sure that uh, everybody likes it everybody knows yeah. that you are at a good place Yes, definitely. Yeah, and that is one of the decisions that I joined my company and I enjoy it. So yeah, it makes sense because and I, anyone out listening, uh, I think if you are moving into this space, you should also prioritize and focus more on work life balance and things like uh, I think things beyond compensation because at the end of the day, compensation will come into the picture if uh, you are learning and working on good projects. If you are having that. uh a uh, piece of mind and other uh, other uh, important stuff yes definitely uh but yeah good to know that you are working and you have good set of high skills and things to do outside of your job which is singing music that you like i think it totally makes sense and uh, definitely it was it, it good to know that um uh, and I, i i the next question that i would want to ask is uh what is the next set of things for a, stu- a student for a pro- aspiring uh, software developer if they want to move in a company like adobe or at lashin what should they focus on what uh, kind of things they should focus on and what should be uh, the good resources okay yeah so um, reaching back to this question actually i would say that because interview processes are like predominantly like they are dominated by dsa and so you have to practice coding anyways like you should never leave it because i know that i have left it now but i have to go back to it again practicing even if i want to apply for other companies when i will be applying for sg2 or whatever mm-hmm. so never leave coding i would say and there are many platforms to practice coding like if you are just starting off your journey then uh, start off with the smaller platforms like geeks for geeks and then go to lead code and then when you become like You know, practice good amount of questions, then go to competitive coding and code code shift and code courses. So um, this is a gradual learning process. It was it was a steep learning curve because many people feel overwhelmed in the start, in that they are not able to do. Even I faced it. Even my friends faced it. Like many good people who have faced in good good companies, even they faced it. So no one knows it at the start. Everyone starts from the like point zero and then they reach higher. so believe in yourself that you'll be able to do it and um, start gradually practice dsa and don't leave it be the practice even practice one question a day uh, if you can't practice every time i would say uh, so i would just say you that don't leave your practice dsa because i regret it because i have left it now and i have to go back to it again and then second thing i would say is uh, like i'm saying that uh, 
don't leave dsa but don't leave the development work as well because if you are applying as a sg you have to do the development work dsa won't i don't think so dsa helps me in the everyday work that i do so the skills that i'd say is that don't leave the development work do web development or ml or uh, like android in which you are interested in find your interests if you are interested in distributed computing or cloud cloud architecture or whatever you should have basic skills like many people who ping me in linkedin like i have these many rating on code chef and these many score on code, code forces and so they don't get interview job or interviews because they don't have any development work they don't have specific development projects in their resume so some companies like directtimemedia.net or you know uh, like code nation they do hire on the basis of competitive coding but most of the companies do see your projects and whatever the development work they have done so don't leave the development um, practice it regularly because i uh, feel that i was not that much into competitive coding i never really liked it but i really liked the development work so i had um, the development projects and that really helped me in my career i would say so uh, yeah dsa and development work i think uh, that should be the most priority one then people uh, do start liking ml and ai and they uh, reach for the ml or ai engineer job that people have uh, i don't have much context about that but yeah these two are the basic priorities that people should never ever leave yeah i think uh, the uh, it's great that how you have put it into a uh, uh, put it that how dsa is very important for you to crack the interviews because at the end of the day uh, most of the companies out there and majority of the companies ask dsa questions in your interview rounds and not only one round but like multiple rounds the first screening to max i think the next set of rounds are based on your coding skills specifically they may or may not uh, directly impact your day to day work when you join the company but yeah that is one way where the other person is going to assess you if you are a right yeah person. they basically assess that how you can how you approach the problem how you see the problem if you don't get intimidated by it and how you are solving how you are you know how you see the problem basically and if you are able to solve it so that's a problem solving skill set that every engineer should be having so that's what it is being judged by dsa don't try to like hum aisa koshish karte hain that hum sare questions that lete hain jo be important i don't try to do that because i know i have done that as well but gradually i understood the importance of you know understanding each and everything because you can't matlab uh, har question rat nahi sakte so you have to basically understand how the things work actually and once you start understanding then you start liking you know solving problems start liking dsa and that will become a day to day habit and you enjoy that and that's the stage that you have to reach yeah i think uh, it totally makes sense in that way because um as you as you move into the right space uh, and you realize that importance of understanding the question right kyunki itna bada syllabus hai itna bade sare questions hai itni variety hai you cannot learn and cram everything and you cannot expect yeah. ki whatever is going to be asked in the interview kyunki wo social studies ka nahi hai ssd jo hum rat le de de it's is going yeah. to be uh, related to real life problems and aapko uh, on point usi time pe you have to think about the solution you have to approach that solution uh, towards this move and move in the right direction uh, so yeah working on your basics and making your basis stronger is the right way and is, is, is the best way actually i yeah don't say that mujhe sare questions aate hain but i know that my basics are so strong that i can you know i can i know how to approach a problem that is what uh, the people should be you know focusing much upon yeah exactly so uh, audience out there uh, work on your basics one work on your basis because if you make them stronger it's how you going to help yourself in the company uh, company while working or how you crack the interviews this is how you going to leave a mark on the uh, interviewer because eventually they are more experienced professionals out there and they will understand that you have right set of basics and you have the strong base so that you are how you are approaching the solution and uh, that's why it's recommended and then the second part that hansika mentioned is but also important where you have couple of projects in your resume where you could have shown your skills because as you work on projects you realize that this is how you want to solve the problem because a project in itself has multiple coding problem multiple problems out there how you want to solve that how you want to not solve that how to tackle that kind of solution if you want to do that or not so try to experience that try to get a taste of it because 
mostly in your majority of the company if you will be working on uh, some kind of an application where some kind of development work will be required you might not use all of your dss skills at that uh, point but yeah definitely it's uh, uh, it's good to have that you have a developmental experience will help you in the real life projects that you're going to work on. Yeah, I think uh, uh, with this, we come to the end of this podcast with all the informations presented in such a great way, such a great format that uh, Hansika has laid out all the information very crisply for the audience to listen and understand uh, and realize what is required to crack those companies, what is required to uh, be a good person or good software developer in the tech uh, space. and how you can work in and out and what are the things that you can practice upon so thank you so much Hansika for answering all of these questions in just such a great way uh, as a person I re- learned a lot of different things at least I learned a lot of things about the companies as well so yeah and definitely audience will be uh, grateful for you for that yeah thanks for having me actually and all the best for everyone who is like preparing for internships just have faith I know even I I have failed many interviews, like not many, but yeah, I have failed a few interviews and I think that I landed into better companies than I was expecting. So uh, yeah, I would say just have faith in the process and just keep learning and don't stop it. Yeah, exactly. So even you face any rejection or anything, you are moving one step closer to your, uh, to the right place that you are supposed to be. So yeah, don't... like I always had this line in front of me that rejection is divine protection. And I, I really feel that I got protected from the such companies uh, so that I landed in the best place. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that's the that's the best motivation I think that you can have because uh, eventually you will have rejections. I also get rejections. Everybody gets. It's not like somebody is God and is going to crack everything. Is going to be perfect at day zero. Uh, it it yes. does not happen in ideal life. You will face. Uh, 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 sorry, in your life you will face interviews. You will face in- rejections on those interviews. So it's not ideal perfect life out there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, best you can do is to learn from your mistakes, make things towards the next big big thing and do what you can do best and give you a hundred percent yeah that's the best thing uh and thanks again hansika for sharing all this information i will put her linkedin link in the description box below you can reach out to her she's a very fun person to connect with and uh, yeah definitely uh I, I really enjoyed this conversation thank you so much hansika for that thanks for having me yeah and all the audience who are listening in i will see you in the next video till then take care Bye bye